Yo, what's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan back at it with day two of the meetup game. And yeah, here at Champions, we're gonna see how this goes. There's two tables already outside. I'm just in this like private room here. So um, yeah, longer day today. We're gonna be playing at least eight hours, I think. Um, it's two o'clock, gonna play until at least 10 o'clock. And it always goes a little bit later. So um, it should be a good time, man. Um, really looking forward to it. Last night was super fun. And yeah, let's just get into the action. You guys don't care. Drop a like. Really appreciate it if you just drop a like on the video too. Um, helps the channel grow, pushes the video to more people to watch it. So if you like it, drop a like. Comment down below if you want, it's so hard to talk with this mask. Comment down below if you uh, wanna win a chip too, a chip package. Um, I give one out every single video and there's that. Thanks, thanks for watching. Let's get into it. Alrighty, hopping into the 1-3, buying in for a thousand, we pick up pocket queens on the button, and there are two limps to me. I raise things up to $20 early on in the session, and the big blind and both limpers make the call. We're going four ways to a flop, which comes six, seven, eight, two spades. It checks to me, and considering we're four ways to the flop, uh, I'm not really confident with one pair on this specific board texture, but regardless with our over pair, I still feel like checking it through is going to be pretty suicidal, letting everyone catch up. So here, I bet $40 for value. The big blind makes the call, and now the cutoff check raises. He check raises to $140 with about $200-ish dollars behind. Um, with pocket queens, one pair, like I said, when we go to the flop four ways, the chances of us being good on any flop is pretty hard, especially on a board this wet. So, um, first hand of the day, unfortunately, we're just gonna have to let this one go. No need to rip it in there, and with the big blind in there as well, um, we're probably beat a lot of the time. We fold, big blind folds, and we're moving on. Hand number two, we're back on the button with pocket nines with an under the gun straddle. There are two calls of the $6 straddle and actions onto me in position with a decent pair. I raise it up to $45. On the larger side for sure, but there's plenty of action here. And we get the under the gun straddler and one of the limpers to make the call. So three ways to a flop, under the gun player has $400 and the limper has $100 left in his stack. So pretty shallow. Flop comes 10, 7, 7, 2 clubs. Under the gun player checks. The limper jams his whole stack in here. He just open rips it in for $106 total. Onto me, and it's such an annoying spot because I really don't beat much on this board besides a club draw. And when I am beat, I'm drawing pretty thin. And if I am not beat, I feel like we're just flipping at best. Regardless with pocket nines, it seems a little too nitty to fold. Um, even though there is the player behind me left to act, which is annoying. So early on in the session, I'm curious. Let's gamble. I put in the 106. The under the player folds, and we're off to a runout. Turns a queen. River is a jack, and that's probably the worst runout we could ask for. He shows us ace-10 offsuit, so we are already beats, drawing super slim, and we are donking off some more money. Nothing more fun than mixing things up with a double board bomb pot. Here we go. We're playing eight or nine handed here. So $10 to the flop. Everyone is going to see both flops. I look down at queen eight off suits and the first board comes queen jack 10, two hearts. Second board is eight, five, six rainbow. Flopping top pair on both boards. It's going to be pretty tricky to navigate. So action checks all the way to me right now. And here, just gonna fire out a bet of $50. Both boards super, super wet. And I feel like I just have to be good on one of these boards at least. I can't be beat on both. Anyways, the middle position player raises it up to $125. Folds around to the small blind who tanks for a while. Big long while before ripping his whole stack in there for $550. Oh my god. We've got action here, and now um, I'm very unfamiliar with double board bomb pots. I've only played them a few times. So I don't know. Uh, I'm stuck a bunch already, and we haven't won a hand so far. Um, I feel like I'm just going to 
I feel like if I call here, I'm calling just hopefully to chop or if someone has like nines or something like that, that has a lot of equity on both boards. Um, I don't really necessarily know. Also, the middle bridge player who raised has about 700-ish dollars behind the stack. So uh, we're definitely playing for stacks here in the situation. So I go into the tank and at the end of the day, uh, folding is boring, right guys? Um, we got to get some footage of the vlog and... Here we make the call because, uh, I don't know, Double Ward Bomb Pops, we're here to gamble. Really, to gamble. We make the call, the middle position player is in agony but ends up folding. Um, and we've got to think that we're at least good here on one of these two boards, but no. The opponent shows pocket aces and we've got to hopefully improve somehow or else we are stacking off again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. That is, that is a good hand. Yeah, I wanted to gamble. Wow. Well, I have to explain how I lost a bunch of money. <laughs> After stacking off again, uh, we pick up a pretty good hand this time. Pocket Kings on the button. And there's an early position open to $12. Here, easy, three bets, spot to $40, and only the pre-flop raiser does make the call for 40. So we're going heads up to a flop, which comes ace, queen, seven, rainbow. Pocket kings, man, it feels like an ace always hits the flop 90% of the time. Um, so when he checks to me here, I feel like I've just got to bet my three betting range sometimes. Maybe get a call from a queen. So I throw out a bet of $35, pretty small, and he does make the call for 35 Going to a turn, which is the Queen of Diamonds. Yuck. Um, when he checks to me, and like I can't even find a hand that I beat now anymore. Um, so I just check it back easily, and we're off to a river. The river is the third queen. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, once again, for a third time, he checks to us. I really don't think an ace or quads or a hand that's beating us is going to check back three times here. So can I target a sticky seven? Can I target pocket tens, pocket nines, or something potentially? Um, I throw out a tiny bet, tiny value bet to $40, hopefully getting a call from worse, but um, unfortunately, he makes the call and shows us the bad news of Ace Jack. Valuing ourselves here, uh, maybe going a little too thin on the river, but I thought it was an okay spot. All right, guys, four losing hands in a row. Come on. Uh, for this next one, we're on the button, and we straddle the $6, and good time to straddle as we pick up pocket queens. There's one early position player who makes the call for $6 and actions onto me. I raise the 35 and he makes the call, so pretty standard pre-flop action. Flop comes deuce, 3-5, rainbow, and he checks to us here in this instance. I fire out a C-bet with my overpair to $40, pretty wet. Pretty wet board. I think I can get a lot of calls from ace high or whatever it may be. He has a very wide limping range. Um, he does make the call for 40, and we're off to a turn. Turn is the 10 of diamonds, brings in a backdoor flush draw, and once again, he checks, trying to figure out a sizing. Um, like, like I said, this guy is very, very wide, and I think he can call pretty wide as well. So here, I opted to polarize my range and throw out an overbet of $175. Pretty much repping a hand like ace high or a pretty nutted hand like an overpair like I'd have right now. Just not entirely sure what his range is when he does call the $40, but I know that he would probably raise if he had two pair. Anyways, he thinks about this 175 bet for quite some time and ends up putting in the call. Now we're going to a river which is a queen. What in the world? This board just kept getting better and better for us. And uh, like I said, I already polarized my range on the turn. When he checks to us, I think I'm just going to target all of his bluff catchers and hopefully even maybe somehow target a two pair holding that is, I don't even know how he could have a two pair holding. But anyways, um, I size up to $450. He tanks for a little bit and unfortunately ends up making the fold saying he had pocket fours. So I was targeting his bluff catchers and the fact that he even thought about it for over a minute is a decent indication that he was at least thinking about it. All right, next spot, pocket nines on the button. I am once again straddling the $6 here. We keep picking up good hands on the button, and the big blind opens it up to $25. A middle position player calls, and easy spot for me to just flat call in position, and we're seeing a flop. 
Plot comes 963 Rainbow. Action checks to me, unfortunately, on this super dry board. Top sets, we have the absolute nuts. We're not really afraid of anything. I decided to play this tricky and check this back. Turn comes the Jack, which brings in a full rainbow, and now the big blind throws out a bet of $40. Middle position player makes the call, and we've got plenty of action here sitting with a set. Very, very disguised set. So I decided to raise it up in position to 175. The middle position player makes the call. So the big blind folds, middle position player calls. Like I said, he's been playing a pretty wide range, and he has about $700-ish behind. Going to a river, which is a queen. So board a little bit more connected, I guess. We don't have the nuts, so we, as we do lose to king 10. And now he actually puts in a bet of $350. I'm thinking, does he ever have king 10? I don't really think so. He, he did bet half of his stack in, so there's only $350 more to go. So if he has his beat somehow, miraculously, so be it. We'll just give it to him. But we put our whole stack in there. And unfortunately, he's got nothing. He has five high, as it was announced. So, um, yeah, we're just going to take this one down. And I'm glad at least he tried to bluff at it on the river after missing. Next hand, ace king with a button shraddle. There's two limps, and uh, with this button shraddle, definitely sizing up here to $40. No folding in Texas, as both of the limpers make the call. So $40, maybe a little too small. Going to a flop, which comes King, Five, Deuce, Rainbow. This is what we call another very dry board. And when it checks to us, I'm certainly going to be betting on the larger side here, because I know one of those players is the same player from last hand who's been playing a pretty wide range. I size up to $80 and that specific player limper does make the call. So in position to a turn, which is the three of hearts brings in a backdoor flush draw. Now he leads out for $225 with only $250 ish dollars behind. Um, I'm very confused. I don't think I can ever even fold here, but this donk lead on this turn is a little strange. Um, anyways, I am way too strong to be folding with top top. Let's evaluate a river and see what happens. So we call the river is another king. So that really makes our lives super, super easy. He jams his stack in and it's an easy snap call from us with ace king. We just show our hand and when he shows his hand, it's bad news for us. It's six, four of clubs hitting the gutter on the turn and getting the full double up from us. <laughs> she literally has my name in the slot still. Hey, first couple of hands, they got me too, you know? You hey. got me on the first hand. At this point in the night, there's a player from one table that bought in for 2K, and we have the beautiful match the biggest stack here in Texas. So we add on for another 1,000, and now we're sitting 2K deep in this 1-3 game. Let's do it. We're on the button in this situation with ace four of diamonds. There are two limps and here I raise things up to $25 with a suited wheel ace. Next to go, the small blind three bets us to $100 and it folds back to me. Um, haven't really sat too long with this small blind player, but I know he's a pretty good player. He can be three betting very light and he usually plays bigger. So with that said, I think this is a very great candidate to 4-bet bluff in position here. He's also 2,000 deep too, so get ready for a big one, boys. I size up to $265. I'm fairly small, but nor normal 2.5x sizing, basically. With this 4-bet, he flats, and we're off to a flop. The flop is King, King, 7, Rainbow. He checks to me, and uh, this is going to be a tricky spot. I think I'm just going to be firing into the abyss, um, but with these two kings out there, smashes my four bidding range, obviously. I down bet to 175, and he makes the call for that amount. Oh boy. Going to a turn, which is a total brick, it's a deuce. Once again, he checks, and do I really want to fire a second bullet here? Um, yeah, I think I do. I want to apply more pressure here. Uh, in position, and we can just put a lot of his hands into tough spots. So we fire for $450. He snap folds. Thank God we take this one down. Remember how I said we're playing deep stacked? This hands, there's a button straddle. I'm on the small blind, and I decided to double straddle. 
And the player to my left, triple straddles. So we're playing 6, 12, 24 in this hand. So action folds around to me. Button even folds his hand. And now we're playing blind versus blind in the 12, 24 game. I looked down at king nine offsuit. Certainly a good candidate to raise it up. So I open up the action to $100. The big blind does not like folding. He's going to play it with us, so we're playing a pretty big pot already. He makes the call, and the flop comes ace, seven, four, all spades. Ace high flop, all spades. We check our cards. We have the nine of spades. So I see about $75. Seems like a decent spot to do it. Um, and with the $75 bet, he makes the call. Turn comes the seven of diamonds, and now um, he certainly has a lot of sevens. I mean, his range is pretty much uncapped here. Um, so like I would do with any ace, um, I just decided to just check here and just pot control, hoping to see a free river. He checks it back, and the river comes the jack of spades. So pretty good news for us. We definitely knew king high wasn't good, and we're hoping that a nine high flush is good. I check um, once again, since this is definitely not strong enough to bet for value. He checks it back. We show our nine high flush, and we're taking this down, taking down a 6, 12, 24 pot. Alrighty, here comes another big one here on this table, man. We're building some stacks. We've got some deep stacks here. So we have pocket kings in the cutoff with an under the gun straddle. Plus one player opens it up to 30. There's one call and now actions onto me in position here. I am obviously going to be three betting this strong hand. I choose a sizing of $155. Folds around to the preflop raiser in plus one. He makes the call. The other player folds. Heads up to a flop, which comes Jack Deuce 5 Rainbow. He checks to us, and in this very dry flop with an overpair, certainly going to be C betting our entire range, even Ace King, Ace Queens, all that fun stuff. I decide to C bet $115, and with this bet, he makes the call, very much narrowing his range to a hand like Jack X. Obviously, very afraid of pocket jacks, as that's certainly in his plus one range and defending a three bet range. Anyways, the turn comes the five of diamonds, brings in the backdoor flush draw. This card is one that I really love. Obviously, we lose to a few less combinations of sets. So with a overpair, I size up to $385. He does something that I'm not too comfortable with. He sticks his whole stack in there for 735 ish dollars total and i mean it's such a small jam it seems like he's pretty nutted here and it's for value certainly he can't have ace jack he can have queen jack that wouldn't really be doing this um i'm really afraid of pocket jacks but with all the money in there already there's no folding pocket kings on this board so we make the call and we're off to a river i have one pair the river is the six of hearts he shows over ace nine of diamonds, and we're gonna take this down with one pair here, scooping a monster pot, and just like that, we are unstuck from this session so far. Not good etiquette, bro. I apologize. You can't stalk people at your meetup yet. I apologize. <laughs> and then you YouTube in it. <laughs> I said it. Drop the thumbs down. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Yeah, the boat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I didn't see it. Yeah. yeah. I found, so, I found. Next spot, Queen 10 of hearts on the button here, and this new table. Only the gun player opens it up to $18. The early position player makes the call. Um, here in position, suited Broadway cards, I make the call, and so does the big blind. So multi-way to a flop, which is 10-6-7 rainbow. The early position player throws out a bet now of $30. Um, here, I'm obviously never folding with top pair, some backdoor heart draws. I call, and the preflop raiser surprisingly also calls. Not really sure what he's doing, checking and then calling a bet on the flop here, but anyways, three-handed to the turn. Turn is the deuce of hearts, brings in a backdoor flush draw. Now, the early position player throws out another bet of $55. This is tiny, tiny, tiny. And I'm not really sure how strong this hand is, given the fact that he's betting out again on the turn, but with such a small amount. So, here with top pair and with improved to the backdoor flush draw, also in position, uh, I feel like I could just make a exploitative play of raising pretty light here. I raised $140, the Unling Un player folds as expected, and now the early position player makes the call. So 
So when he makes the call, I'm expecting to go check check many rivers here. Um, but the river comes the eight of hearts, improving us to a pretty good flush. And also there's a four line to a straight. And now he bleeds out into us for $215. With only 400-ish dollars behind, this is an easy jam spot, assuming a straight will call a lot of the time. Any 9x will probably call, hopefully. Um, anyways, like I said, I Hollywood a little bit, pretend like I'm thinking, but obviously this is just a slam dunk jam. He tanks for just so, so long before making the fold, unfortunately. Not going to make you sweat it out, but um, yeah, we don't make the extra $400 that was left in his stack. He makes a pretty good fold, and on to the next one. Last hand of the night with 8-5 of hearts. In the big blind, playing six-handed, under the gun opens it up to 12. Middle position player makes the call, and for $9 more with some suited gappers or three gappers, I call as well, and we're off to a flop. The flop is as good as you can ask for. It's ace, queen, five, two hearts. Bottom pair, flush draw. What more can you ask for with this big blind special? So I check, under the gun player, C bets $15, middle position player makes the call, and no need to blow up this pot out of position, I flat as well. Turn comes the 10 of hearts. I'm running pretty darn good right now. Not really great early on, but now we're doing pretty well. I check once again, the under the gun player throws out a bet of $50, middle position player folds, and definitely putting in the check raise here. 8 high flush is definitely not amazing since we get there but also definitely want to protect against one heart holdings. I put in the check raise to $150, pretty standard 3x, and while making the call, he doesn't look very happy about this, so I'm putting him on ace x with a pretty decent heart. With that in mind, the river is a 4 total blank. Got to assume our flush is good here, and I decide to size down to get value from one pair. Um, given his grimace while calling my turn raise, it just that's, that's just what it seemed like. So I bet 125, he makes the call pretty quickly, and I'm good against ace-queen. So flopping top two there, a pretty hard spot to get away, and luckily for us, we get there with the flush. weekend meetup game awesome time we really got to experience the deep one three here in texas crazy um there i went to a table and <laughs> we were playing deep man we were playing deep i, I had maybe like three thousand and there's another guy that had like two thousand two k like not the typical two uh one three that you'll find anywhere so this was a blast i got to really experience it and roller coaster session starting off down a lot and we crawled our way back up, so we were in the game for 3,100, out of the game for 4,500 on the dot. So, really good profit there. Um, longest session of the year by far, too, and I felt really good about it. <laughs> I, I wasn't, like, tired at all, which is really interesting. Anyways, great time. Um, this place is awesome. I love Houston. It's, it's an amazing city, and, yeah, I can't wait for day three of poker. So let's do it. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Watch out for the next video. I'm sure it'll be a fun one. I mean, the action here is absolutely incredible. So thanks for watching, sticking to the end. And thanks for everyone that came out today. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.